Hey everybody, Bones here, Bones Garage, just bringing you an update what's going on at the garage. So, Cadillac 500 motor, this is the motor that we went and picked up in uh, Goldie, my 1973 Cadillac Calice, and this motor is going to be going into Catatonic, my 1976 Cadillac Hearse. This is a really nice motor, didn't have a ton of miles on it, had a lot of really nice uh, go-fast parts in it already that I didn't have to buy, so we took the trip to go get it, mainly for the parts that were in it, um, and also the block and the heads, I, I wanted another block and heads so I can have an extra motor laying around. So anyhow, this motor, we got it, put it on the stand, started it up, it ran Eh, it would run for a minute or so, maybe good, good, half a minute, and then it would stall out. And it was never running correct. So, stopped doing that, took it off the stand, brought it in the back. First thing I did was pull the front of, co the, the, front of the motor off. Once I pulled it off, I saw that the timing chain, which resides right here, the uh, upper gear sits on the cam, which sits right over here. That's your lower gear, and the chain connects the two gears together. It had a lot of slop in it. Not a ton, but enough to make me go, it's got a few miles on this. Um, here is the timing chain. There's the upper gear that attaches to the cam. The lower gear sits over here, which is on the crankshaft. And when you went like this, there was movement right here. Normally, this should be nice and taut, almost like a guitar string. Um, there's your crankshaft. There's your lower timing chain gear. So, saw that. Got me a little bit to where we're going to have to rebuild this. I also dropped the oil. When I dropped the oil, I pulled the plug out. And on the magnetic plug, there were a lot of very fine shavings. Way more than I would like to have seen. So I already knew now that there is definitely a problem in, <clears throat> inside this motor. So I went ahead and tore the heads off, tore the manifold off, got everything out. We uh, have some really nice rockers that came with this. These are the rockers. They're a full aluminum rocker with a full girdle on them. And um, they're uh, bearing trunnions over there. Those are the trunnions. That's where they pivot back and forth like that on those trunnions. Um, which is really nice because it reduces friction, reduces wear. Um, also gives you a couple extra horsepower and then the rollers on the tips which sit on your valves as the rocker goes up and down this roller will go back and forth instead of metal to metal contact which would be sliding back and forth this rolls back and forth so again keeps wear down and it also gives you a little bit of horsepower because you're not getting all that friction in it and these rollers roll on the top of the valve which is right here so the ro the rocker would sit this way and it would go up and down and push this valve up and down and as you can see where the wear mark is right there it rolls back and forth as it goes up and down so really nice setup there well, once we got everything apart, I started taking the lifters out of their bores. This is a lifter, or a flat tappet, it's also known as. It's a hydraulic, and this is the bore that it would go in right here. And normally, you would just take them and just slide them right out, just like that. Well, this lifter and that lifter right there would not come out. I would be able to slide them probably about that far out, and then they would get stuck. So I just wedged them in, got the timing chain off, pulled the cam out. And when I pulled the cam out, the first thing I saw was this lobe right there. As you can see, that lobe is gone. It is rounded off. The lobe should normally look like a triangle. See how that one's triangular shape? But even when you look at this one, you can see that it has an edge on it. Normally, there wouldn't be an edge right there. So even this lobe was starting to wear out. You can even see on this one how much rounder it is than this one. This one was also starting to wear out. But if you look at the profile of that very first one, you'll see 
there is no triangle left. It's pretty much almost completely round. You can see it right next to that one, how much of a triangle shape there is and how much there is in here. We also had that same problem with this lobe right there. So that tells me a couple of things. That tells me that either they weren't running a zinc additive in their oil for a flat tap at cam, or they bought cheap parts. Now, the owner told me they always ran a zinc oil from the guy who actually owned the motor, the original owner of the motor. And the guy who bought the motor, he was running a zinc oil in it. So I don't think that was the problem. What I think was the problem was cheap Chinese parts. Now, if you look at that lifter right there and you look at the very top where the lifter rides on the cam, so the lifter would sit in its board, the cam is right over here. So the lifter sits in its board, the cam you'll see it was right over here. And then this lifter will ride right on this right here. As the cam rotates, it pushes the lifter up when it hits this part of the, uh, the cam, and then it drops it back down as it goes around. So what's happening is, see that, how rough that looks right there? That surface right there. See how rough that surface looks? See how the outside of that surface is nice and shiny? Normally when these lifters wear, they stay shiny like that. They don't really get all that pitting in them. Now what probably it is, is these are the cheap Chinese lifters. They use crap, crap metal on everything. Everything I get that has a China marking on them or made in China is garbage. I have not found anything as of yet that is any good that comes out of China, including the coronavirus, um, which I prefer to call the China virus, but we'll get onto that subject some other day. So anyhow, that turns into sandpaper. So if, as that cam is rotating and that lifter is pushing against that cam it's just grinding all the metal down so that is why that lobe right there looks like it does that lobe has been sanded down by the lifters so guys get yourself good parts and another thing i can tell is this lifter is already loose uh, it, it shouldn't have play in it normally the spring inside here would push the cap against these keepers. The But it's not. It rattles. So uh, more than likely, these are just cheap Chinese lifters. And as I was saying, get yourself good U.S.-made products. They really are a much better product. Yes, you're paying more for it in the beginning, but in the long run, you are going to save a ton of money because if you don't, you're going to be bringing me your car with the same problem and I'm going to have to do the exact same thing to your car as I'm doing to mine, which is pull everything apart, spend a shitload of money and rebuild everything. Um, so get American made stuff. I like Isky cams. I also love Howard's cams. Their Thumper cam is just an amazing cam. It really has a great sound to it. Gives you nice power as well. Um, so the next thing we're looking at on this motor are the cylinders. When I first pulled the heads off and I saw this dish in the cylinder, the nice round dish, I knew immediately with those 120cc heads that this is an 8.2 compression motor. In other words, it's super low. I'm looking for a street motor that has 10, 10 and a half to one, even nine and a half to one compression. Um, anything over 11 to one compression, now you're starting to go into a motor that's going to need a race fuel, 100 octane or better. Um, so I usually like to stick with 10 to one as my maximum for the street. So these pistons with those heads were giving us about 8.2 to 1 compression. Low horsepower, low torque motor. If I was going to use a piston, a stock piston over, there are a few different choices for Cadillac. 
This is the lowest compression. Then you have the flat top piston, which will give you, depending on what head you're using, uh, 8.5 to 1 or 9 to 1. If you're using a 76cc head, it'll give you around 9, 9.3 to 1 compression. Um, the next piston would be the big peanut dish piston. And the actual dish right here looks like a large peanut. If you're using them with the 120cc heads, you'll probably get 9.5, maybe 10 to 1 compression. But when you're using them with the 76cc head, you'll get 10 to 1 compression. If you, There is also a squashed peanut dish. If you're using those with the 76cc head, and again, those are a stock setup you'll be doing 11 to 1 compression. And if you're using it with the 120, you'll go anywhere from 10 and a half to 10 to 1 compression, um, somewhere in there. So general rules of those pistons. I'm going to go with a nice flat top, um, dome top piston, which is with those 120cc heads will give me a nice 10 to 1 compression. So it's going to be a real nice motor, very streetable. It's going to give me anywhere in the neighborhood of 450 to 475, maybe even 500 horsepower, depending on how much we have to take off the bottoms of the head. In other words, where the head meets to the block, we mill those down to make sure that they are perfectly flat along with the top of the block. We'll deck the block to make sure that's also perfectly flat. So when we put everything together, it's a beautiful seal with the head gasket in between the two of them. So that's what we're looking at with the block. Um, we are definitely going to be taking all this out. We're going to get new pistons. I'm going to get better connecting rods for it, all new bearings for the bottom end. If the cylinders are in good shape, in other words, they're not... Um, tapered in any way or they have a bulge towards the middle in any way they don't have any lip right here so i know that they don't have a ton of wear in them so they should be pretty good all we should have to do is just hone out the cylinders and get a piston to fit in that cylinder whether it's uh, 20 30 40 60 or 80 um, thousandths over what the original bore was we can get all those different size pistons for this motor um, I want to also show you the heads. Now, the heads are really good condition. It looks like somebody just recently did some head work on them. These are not the original springs for the head, um, for the valves, actually. <clears throat> These springs are an aftermarket along with the caps and the keepers. Also, we have a valve tip saver on them. That's your valve tip saver. That is where the rocker pushes back and forth on the valve tip. Now you can get these in different heights as well because these rockers are on a pedestal. You have to, if you deck the block or you mill the bottoms of the heads, you have to change either these or the height of the pedestal. So this way when the rocker rolls back and forth, it stays centered on the tip of the valve. And it opens it up nice and closes it nice without falling off to either side, the top or the bottom of the tip of the valve. So there's a few things with Cadillacs that are a lot different than what Chevys do. Um, here you can see the 120cc combustion chamber, and that's what I was talking about. When the piston comes up, it compresses everything, and it gives you from a one-to-one -one ratio, which would be all the way down here, to a what I'm going to go with a 10 to 1 compression ratio which would be up here in other words it's compressing the air 10 times to what it would normally be in atmospheric conditions so 14.7 times 10 that's what our compression ratio would be we have a 177 exhaust valve and a 2.0 something or other intake valve on here so that's your exhaust that's your intake so it's a nice valve setup it's not the biggest we could go a little bit bigger with the intake and a tiny tiny bit bigger with the exhaust but the amount of money it costs to open up the hole for the valves to fit in and then give them a, uh, the angled valve job that you need is just way expensive it's not worth the amount of power you're going to actually gain 
by doing it. So we're going to leave that alone, but we're going to get these heads. We're going to pull them all apart. We're going to check all of our valves, the valve stems, the guides, the valve guides, make sure they fit nicely. If they don't, I'll bring them to the machine shop. He'll knock out the guides, put in new ones, put all new seals in it, and then put her all back together and give me a nice set of heads. Once we get all the parts back, we'll put everything all back together and make this into a really nice motor. This, this thing should be pushing, like I said, anywhere from four to 475 horsepower and probably in the neighborhood of 650 to 675 foot pounds, maybe 700 foot pounds of torque. It just depends on how much we're taking off the deck and how much we're taking off the bottom of the head. Another really nice thing that this car came with is this high-rise Edelbrock intake manifold. Um, I know the outside looks all beat up and ugly, but that's very easy to clean up and make look nice. What I was more worried about was how nice the interior of this looks. Almost brand new. It's hardly been used. Got a little bit of staining right there where the four barrel was and a little bit right there. Spent a lot of time with the pedal down to the floor. You can tell by how much staining is on it. And um, it is a really nice high-rise manifold. The original Cadillac manifold was just down here. So the runners used to go way down to about here. And it would drop the fuel from the carburetor into the manifold down. And then the fuel would have to make a 90 degree turn to go this way. And then it would have to climb back up to get into the cylinder head and then go back down to go through the valve to get inside the combustion chamber. So there was a lot of detouring that your air fuel mixture used to have to go through, which would lessen the atomization, creating bigger droplets going in, which don't burn quite as well as a smaller droplet. And it would also slow down the velocity because you're doing so many, you're going down, making a 90, coming back up, then you're going back down through the valve and into the cylinder. So it would slow the fuel down, which would make less fuel go into the cylinder, which giving you less power, bigger droplets in the cylinder, again, giving you a slower burn, again, less power. So this is a very nice manifold. Um, so basically, that's what's going on with this motor. I can't wait to get her all built and get her into catatonic. Um, the costs of a Cadillac motor are probably triple to if I was to do just a regular Chevy big block. Um, I can buy a full set of Chevy big block pistons for the same price that I'm buying three Cadillac pistons for. So it's quite expensive doing a Cadillac, but oh, I can't wait. I love the sound of these Cadillac motors, especially the 500 cubic inch motor. They really have such a great, deep sounding tone to them. And the amount of torque that these things put out is just ridiculous. It is just such a great motor. I love Cadillacs, as you guys already know. So there you go, guys. That's what's going on with the uh, 1976 Cadillac Hearst, Catatonic. I will keep you up to date. And um, yeah, that's about it. Have fun. Okay, bye.